Okay, so we're going to make uh, this depth mic stand, and what it is is it's it's a it's an adapter that's going to go for your calipers, and so uh, it'll fit both the 12 inch or the six inch calipers. Um, what we have planned right now is it goes into this slot. Uh, it's got a 1032 screw that goes in uh, sideways and then pinches it in there. Um, so this is what we've got really kind of set up so far. So I'm going to start. Uh, just from the beginning and um, we'll just keep this one in the background so that we can um, reference it as we go. So we'll go to new design and we'll start with a new sketch. We're going to make sure that we're, we've got um, our preferences set. So I'm going to go into preferences, Z up, and um, we can talk about preferences more as we go. Uh, as long as we have that, should be good to start. So we want to pick this plane to work off of. So we got our Z plane going crossed here. So we're going to pick this plane or planar face to work off of. So we click there. That should set us looking at um, this top face. So essentially Z is pointing towards us. Y is pointing up and down. X is pointing across left and right. And so what we're going to make is we're going to make a rectangle. And the way I want to start this part out is um, I want to uh, use this upper left-hand corner as my zero. And that's going to come into play later on. And so it can be moved at any time, but it's really better if we just start out kind of knowing where we want it to go. So when we machine this, it'll be against the rigid jaw on the left-hand side. Now when using Fusion 360 or really any CAM program, almost any program at all, uh, things tend to work left to right, up and down. So we're going to work across as we go. Uh, same thing for top down. Okay, so here we have our part. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this rectangle. So we're over here in create. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to snap into this first corner. And as you see that, um, as I'm moving across, I have uh, one of these highlighting. Um, so you can see that 3.53 inches. So my depth, my Y is highlighted um, it's going to be one inch so i'm going to leave it highlighted i'm type one point and then i'm going to go tab and i'm going to go to the other point and it's going to be um, 3.0 or just three point now i'm going to fit that in by coming down here to uh, my little magnifying glass with the fit and if that doesn't show up you can go zoom window you can go fit just hit the arrow down fit that in and then i can move it around however i want using the the hand or the pan command. Okay, so I can see my dimensions. I've got my part here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I want to come in and I want to create something kind of curvy uh, looking at this one. Uh, we did some modifications to it in class as we went, but I want to make uh, this side um, just, you know, just kind of flowing as it goes across. Um, I'm actually going to, let me back up just a little bit and I'll kind of show you a little bit more of what we did in class today. So I'm going to extend this out to four inches and that way you can see kind of the full changes and stuff that we've made as we went. So I'm going to come over here, go back over underneath solid um, and I'm under the create tab so I can hit here and I'm just going to snap to a spot, do an angle and then go straight up and just do this work on this one side right now couple of different ways of doing this, but we're going to start out with just some really, really simple features in Fusion. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put my 10 degrees in. So I hit both of these lines and I make my angle 10 degrees. I want this section to be down here. I want it to be about 200,000. So I've got already my distance command or my dimension command. So I go in and click 200. Um, and then I think I said this dimension from here to here was going to be 1.5. So we're pretty close. 1. Whoops. 1.5. Now what these are doing is they're locking these uh, dimensions in and, or they're constraining um, these, these places. And so that way if I can start making some dimensional moves or changing things around, which we will do in a little bit, uh, this helps us to know what it is that we've got, what is it that we want to stay in place. I'm going to go ahead and put some corner radiuses in here, here to here. That's going to be 250. And then I'll put another one down here. A lot of times you can just come into this corner section and it will grab it. 
or we can grab this leg here and so there you go and so we got 150 down here so we got a, a 1.5 or a 0.15 radius down here 0.25 radius up here so a quarter inch and 150 okay one thing I would do often is save and so first time I'm gonna save um, I can just call this for whatever for whatever reason I'm just gonna call it a today just the first letter that came up uh, we'd already saved it in our original project in class this is just a little catch-up video so um, I would hit save uh, we'll work a little bit more on creating some uh, projects and some file folders for a little bit of file management and maybe in a later video so I've got essentially half my part made I can do a couple different things um, at this point I would have normally had my class uh, draw the other side of this by themselves so we'll just go ahead and draw it out um, come up here take care of this side again I know that this is 10 degrees so 10 I know that this dimension down here is 200 and yes I could mirror this uh, but typically um, I would not be doing both sides of this I would do one side of it then I'd have you do the other side of it um, go ahead and put my radiuses in here 250 and then here whoops go back up and hit radius and here and we'll get 150 okay so now um, at this point I could I could finish this sketch I could definitely hit save um, I'll probably go ahead and just get rid of this line right here uh, it'll help me out later so I'll create a line between these two so I should end up with a one inch wide space here in the middle um, I've got four inches across this thing now from this point I want to go ahead and give this thing some depth so I've got no depth in it right now I've got this section this is my datum point at x0 y0 but there is no z value so I'm going to go up and click the solid tab extrude it I'm going to go down with my extrusion this way and let's see what we made our extrusion half inch so we'll do the same thing here go to the extrusion and we will make it minus half inch that's because I wanted to go down below the surface so there we go and so in class I would also have had them um, change the color of the part at some point so that might just be something as, sim as simple as highlighting it right click go to appearance um, and then go down to let's see what colors are available uh, maybe this time I change it to green and what I would do is I just drag this uh, paint enamel glossy green over on my part close it I can change either the entire solid or just one face of it if I wanted to or one um, edge radius whatever I want on there save often uh, will always be your friend next thing we need to do is put a slot in the center of it so if you'll notice mine has been changed uh, that's a change that we made in class and so we're gonna go ahead and put this slot in first uh, this slot is 675 and it runs the entire length of the part so we've got we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new sketch and we're gonna put it right on this face come up here it is 900 thousandths Ooh. Just notice I've got a problem let me back up just a little bit I didn't quite make my part I made my part too deep is what I did um, so let's go back into the first sketch finish the sketch and I'm gonna go back and edit this sketch okay so that was a mistake on my part so this should not be one inch tall it should be 900 tall now that's a problem so if you notice that moved all of these things the wrong way so I want to come back back up make it back the way that it was uh, delete that and then um, let's see if I can get it to move from here yeah so this is the point where I want everything to change or everything to move up but I want all of these dimensions to stay the same so everything that has a dimension to it is locked in place go back and finish that sketch um, 
must have this thing wonky in one way. Um, so let's see, let's look at this bottom. Must still be at three inches, so this needs to be four inches here. It's actually going to be three inches later on. Now we're symmetrical, okay? So at this point, our part is four inches by 900, um, and then it's a half inch deep as far as our depth on there. Okay, so this was what our part is going to look like. That's what the stock, um, we're getting ready for the machining operations on it right now. This was my original X0, Y0, Z0, it still is. And um, so this is the part that we have. We'll go into our second sketch, go back in and go to edit sketch. Create another rectangle. That rectangle is gonna go here to about here. Um, I actually want to make it 675. I should have grabbed it while I was there. 0.675 for depth, or for width, sorry. Um, bring that down just a little bit. Now I want to get that thing centered. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hit shift while I've got the dimension command active. I find the middle of this um, line, so X, and then find this edge. 538, it's going to be 500, put that slot right there in the middle. Okay, file save. I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of angle, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude it down, and I think I want to extrude it down 275. This video gives you the benefit of um, already knowing or not having to fumble through all of the stuff that we already worked through in class today. So now I get a nice slot in the middle of this. So it's 275 deep, it's in the middle of the part. So our part's still four inches long. Now I wanna put a tapped hole on the side of that. And how I actually wanna do that is start a new sketch and it's gonna be on this face. Now there's a couple of different ways to do it. One of the ways I like to do it is I like to go ahead and just make a, a circle. Put that circle on that face and I want that circle to be 190 in diameter and it's right there come down from the top 175 and then we'll go over from this edge 175 okay now problem with that screw or problem with that circle is it does come into the radius just a little bit it's not going to be a problem for us as we go but um, so we've got this on there so we've got three sketches at this point so save and you can feel free to stop this video. I'm racing through it, but I just literally just finished up in class with this part. And this is just kind of to recap what we were doing. Okay, so now what I want to do is um, work on, so we'll finish the sketch. So I'm pretty happy with that hole. I'm going to come in and actually make, or sorry, uh, happy with that circle. I want to make it a hole. So come in here. And I want to pick a hole that is tapped, no thread offset, just coming down through it. So it's going to go a half inch deep. Doesn't really matter what the drill point is on it. It's set for 118, but it doesn't really make any difference. I mean, we're going through the part. Um, we're going to make it a 1032, so 190, number 10. It's going to be 1032, 2B, right handed. Go ahead and model it. That way we'll be able to see what the threads look. Um, They'll, they'll look more realistic as we go. And so the benefit of doing it like this is this brings our um, screw threads really close to the bottom of the hole or bottom of the slot, but it doesn't really get them going into it. Now it may come close. Um, that'll really kind of depend on how well you guys touch the things off. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and do a file save at this point. Um, at this point is where we really kind of made the decision that we wanted to change one side of this, partly because I didn't know if I had any long tools to get down in there and do this 1032 tap. So uh, I decided I would shorten this side up. I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for them to see, the students to see, um, that we can come back to an earlier sketch and work off of um, or change some things without really destroying anything else. Um, the great thing about programs like this or, or CAM systems or CAD CAM systems is that it's they're really they're really flexible as far as being able to change the the dimensions as we go. So for this one, we're not actually working off of a part print. We're building and designing this as we go. So I'm going to go back to my sketch one. 
and I'm going to change. So before I do that, I have to I have to constrain a couple things, and one of the ways I'm going to do that is just hit this one inch dimension. Um, hit that. That means that um, this section here is stuck. This section here is stuck. Everything that's got a dimension is stuck. So now I'm going to take this and change it to three, and see how this one side pulls in much tighter. Take it. Now we get the same thing. Now it's starting to look a lot like this guy. So it's identical to that guy. So at this point, um, I've got my complete part. And um, this will be a good little addition to our toolboxes um, to be able to use for depth uh, measurement. Now, if I want to, or we've got enough time, we can go through a couple of of things that, that Fusion gives us as far as some advantages. We've already looked at color. I'll go ahead and do a quick save on this thing. Um, if I want to go through and see all my steps, I can go through and just go through the play button and build it through. That helps you determine if you've got some problems. It'll also see, um, if you're doing assemblies, it'll help you kind of build some of that stuff out. Any of these things in the timeline, I can go back and do some modifications to um, without really causing any problems. If I want to come in and just screw, so say I looked at this screw and I was like, gosh, man, I didn't put a chamfer on there. So I want to put a chamfer on there. Um, say maybe 82 degrees would be fine. Um, this it needs to be bigger, so maybe 210. And um, so now I've got a little chamfer on the hole there. So see, it's really, really intuitive as the way as, as far as this thing moves. It's a pretty good program. I'm pretty happy with it. Anytime I make a change, I want to do kind of some kind of a save, save as. While we're talking about that, um, let's look at uh, the way that we do file management. If you go over all the way to the upper left-hand side in these nine squares, yours will not look like mine. I've got a lot of other stuff. So you can go in and um, go to New Project, and you can call it um, – this is already a um, – project I believe that we have so in this project I can come in I can click on it so what is a, it's a big file folder is what it is it's a storage facility and so inside of that I can put um, my part which I just named a so um, that can just make a file folder for that and so now I can come over here at with my part do file save as so I can go to file save as and go down um, to my project here and go to my A folder and then just go back up with my arrow and so it's going to go to machine 134 and it's going to go to A and it's going to save it in there. And so now when I go inside of it I see my part. So that helps me um, I've got a log of everything that I've done in there. Um, it helps me uh, just organize and store my parts in a really good organized way. So um, from this point, this takes care of the drawing portion of our part. Now this was accelerated. Um, we worked on this for several hours in class, working through with about nine students. Now um, feel free, again, like I said, to stop this, kind of work through the problems as you go, and back up the video as much as you need to. Okay, we will see you tomorrow.